Thank you so much. Yes, I am Monica Salafia. I'm a registered dietitian nutritionist and the founder of Mind on Nutrition, which is a private practice in Colorado. And I mainly work with people who are looking for body recomposition, improvements in their metabolic health, and overall confidence and well being. Nutrition can be really confusing, and it's a lifelong journey for a lot of us. There's also different phases of our lifestyle that will influence our nutritional needs. So, my aim is to teach you the foundations of nutrition. So that way, not only it increases your nutrition knowledge, it also increases your self-efficacy in applying some of these principles and makes you feel really good from the inside out. So without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and share my slides. And I'm gonna just get right into our topic today, which is going to be on energy balance and sports nutrition tips. When I say sports nutrition, I'm talking about any sort of movement or physical activity. It doesn't need to be an organized sport, but it can be anything like walking that you plan to do for exercise. It can be something like, you know, uh, weightlifting. That's my favorite. So right away, let's go ahead and share. So sports nutrition tips, best practices on what to eat before and after your workouts. First thing we have to discuss is getting the right amount of quality calories. So calories are another word for energy and the number of calories you eat directly translates to the energy and power you can produce and how much energy you have to recover. Very important that we look at calories as a source of fuel for our movement and activities and as a source of fuel to recover from said activities. Too often what we find in the fitness industry is we use calories and workouts as an exchange. I burned 500 calories in my spin class, so I, have to, I get to eat 500 calories. I encourage people to look at it the other way. Look at your calorie intake as the fuel for your workouts. One, it's going to feel better instead of just looking at that exchange. Two, it's going to physically give you that energy so that way you have the gusto to put in the effort in the workouts. And workouts are really where you do get to see the body composition changes. Yes, the nutrition pieces will reveal a lot of it. However, in order for you to get the most out of your workouts, whether it's walking or running or weightlifting, volleyball, you want to be well-fueled. And that's how we want to start up our talk. So getting the right amount of calories. Briefly, I have here energy balance on my whiteboard. So I'll just review that when we have calorie, more calories in than what our needs are, we will gain weight. Now, sometimes that's a good thing, right? If somebody's wanting to build muscle or build bone density, very important for women, then we want to look at increasing our calories and of course, following the right exercise regime. When our calorie intake in is less than our needs, we lose weight. And sometimes that's desirable too. Maybe our joints are feeling really stiff or in pain. Maybe our, I'm sorry, maybe our uh, goal is to reveal muscle that we've built, or maybe we're just looking to lose some vanity pounds before a wedding. Those are some of the reasons we might see weight loss as a goal. When our calories in is equal to our needs, then we maintain, we just stay equal. Our weight doesn't change. Sometimes I'm working with individuals and they are maybe dieting Monday through Wednesday, really strict on their calorie intake. But then come Thursday and the weekend, their calories go above their needs. Then they end up maintaining. So they might walk into session saying, I did so good on Monday and everything, I, I followed the plan to a T, but then come the weekend, we, we went out a little bit, but I didn't do anything too crazy. And what I'm here to say is nothing that we do is ever too crazy when it comes to nutrition, but there are there a lot of calories in our food supply. Sometimes we don't realize it. So it's very easy to go above your needs through either food choices or portion sizes, even through foods that we would consider quote unquote healthy, which I'll talk about that soon and see no weight change. That's just because the calories that we are putting in our body is matching what our needs are throughout a weekly basis. So I'm a big proponent of us getting the right amount of calories and eating foods that have our nutrient needs and our calorie needs. 
So we get our calories from carbohydrates. So I have a couple of variety of carbohydrates here. Oatmeal, that's one of my favorites. Polenta, rice is a great carbohydrate. Beans have carbohydrates in them. We, get, uh, we need protein, which also provides calories. So that's things like eggs will provide protein. Protein powder will provide protein. Peanut butter has protein in it. Then we have calories from fats, which that is the highest amount. We actually get nine calories per gram whenever we eat a gram of fat in our food, whether it comes from olive oil or it's just mixed into it like a piece of steak, for example. And then alcohol also provides calories. It provides seven calories per gram. And while that's not an essential nutrient, it's definitely a nutrient that people get a lot of their calories from. And there are lots of things to discuss when it comes to the alcohol calories, but we're going to keep it food focused for today. So looking at some of these foods and thinking about foods in terms of carbohydrates, proteins, and fats, another thing that's important to know is that foods rarely have only one type of calorie source. I would say sugar is a great example of uh, calories just from carbohydrates. Oil is a really good example of calories just from fat. And egg whites are a really good example of calories that just come from protein. But a lot of the foods that we eat are mixed foods. So this is my Venn diagram that I like to share with my clients. And it just explains to them how some of the foods that we eat are just carbohydrates. That's uh, in this blue circle here. Some of the foods we eat are just fats. Some of the foods we eat are just proteins, but a lot of the foods we eat are interlapped in some foods, for example, milk, chia seeds, nut butters, protein bars. Even though they're called protein bars, they actually usually provide calories from all three macronutrients. So that's why macronutrients are really important when I discuss nutrition protocols in sports or health, any topic, because that's where we get our calories and calories will influence weight, whether it's uh, for muscle or losing body fat. And that is something that I like to help people reframe their mindset about food. Instead of looking at foods as good or bad, we want to look at it for what it objectively is providing our bodies. And I have a little question here. If you want to do a self quiz, what on this plate is a carbohydrate? I'll go ahead and answer that. On this plate in particular, we have an egg white wrapped as asparagus omelet situation. We've got sweet potatoes and we've got watermelon. On this plate, carbohydrates are coming from the sweet potatoes, the watermelon, and the asparagus. Now, they are in varying amounts and they are in different forms. But at the end of the day, that plate has calories from carbohydrates from those three items. In the protein section, that egg, that's providing protein calories and it's providing fat calories. So when we're eating food, understanding where the calories are coming from is a really important skill to try and invest in. Next, I wanna talk about choosing nutrient-rich foods. So whenever you eat your food choices, food choices should provide ample amount of micronutrients. Those are the vitamins and minerals in our food supply. We often will take supplements like vitamin D or a lot of us took vitamin C during you know, pandemic times, or maybe are still are taking it. While those are really helpful to supplement our diet that's maybe lacking in these nutrients, or maybe our needs increase because we're pregnant and the body just can't get enough from foods, that's where those supplements can come in handy. But we really wanna strive to eat a lot of our foods in a more nutrient dense way. I maybe have talked to you guys about the 80-20 principle, but I, I came up with a little bit of a Venn diagram um, matrix in a way where I like to talk to people about the calorie and nutrient density in their foods. So some foods that we eat in this box right here have high calorie density, but high nutrient density. I think peanut butter is a really great example of high calorie density and high nutrient density because in just two tablespoons, which you guys is not a lot, <laughs> it, it's a considerable amount, but we tend to eat over eat peanut butter. We get almost 200 calories, but not again, not a bad thing. We are getting 200 calories and we're also getting 18 milligrams of calcium. We're getting some iron, we're getting other micronutrients that we need in order to metabolize all those fuels. So that is a section of our diet where yes, sometimes we eat foods that are high in calories, but they're high in nutrients and that's okay. Some foods we eat are low in calories, but high in nutrients. Basically any fresh fruit or vegetable 
in its whole form is going to be low calorie dense, high nutrient dense. Think of a big bowl of watermelon or grapes or cherry tomatoes, right? You could eat like a whole pound or a pint of those and it might be 50 calories, maybe. And combining those two categories of food in our diet most often, right? Some high calorie dense, some high, some low calorie dense, but all nutrient dense, we're gonna be on a better trajectory for health and fitness. Now, some foods we eat are low calorie density and low nutrient density. To me, these things are just vehicles. So I like to pick on rice cakes for this. Uh, rice cakes, you know, they have about 10 grams of carbohydrates, maybe eight grams of carbohydrates. So pretty minimal. And it's only 40 calories. So not making a big dent. But what they're great for is being able to, you know, put peanut butter on. So you're getting more fats and more proteins, also helping you stay fuller longer, or a slice of deli turkey for more protein. So I look at some foods in our diet as low calorie dense, low nutrient dense vehicles. Romaine lettuce, great option. Iceberg lettuce, also a great option. Despite romaine lettuce being a little bit darker and a little bit more nutrient dense, it's mostly about what is that piece of lettuce providing you. So that's some of the foods in our diet. And then we have that other category where some foods we eat are just high in calories and not high in nutrients at all. And that's okay. We got to embrace those foods. Some of those foods are my favorite foods. Uh, I see no intention of getting rid of ice cream in my diet. While it might be providing me a little bit of calcium, I know it's providing me a lot more calories than it is nutrients. And that's okay. I just make it fit into my diet and modify my portion sizes. So that way it still feels good. I don't restrict and I don't encourage restrictions. I just encourage modifications and awareness of how much you're eating. So that way you see feeling good about your food choices and your body stays feeling good. Um, I won't belabor this too much. The nutrients in our food include everything from the vitamins A, C, D, E, K, B vitamins, and my nutrients also include the elements in our food. So calcium, potassium, sodium, zinc, selenium. So the more we have in our food supply from micronutrients, the more we're benefiting from our food choices. So try to, this is another thing lesson that I teach often because too many times we'll think of foods as good versus bad. And those bad foods become more tantalizing to eat when we are able to or allow ourselves to. And that's where sometimes we get into either we end up eating more than we need because now we're just like free for all going ham on this pizza, or you were maybe too strict. And then you overate something because again, you were, you were at a wedding and the, the cake, you haven't had cake in 30 days because you're on Whole30, something like that. Um, so what I strive for is try to choose as many nutrient dense foods in your diet and allow for some of that other low nutrient dense foods because you're going to probably eat them anyways. So that is just reiterated in this visual here, the low calorie density, high calorie density matrix. Uh, feel free to take a screenshot of this slide. I think it can really help reframe your mindset on food through today and the rest of your days. And that's definitely something that I strive for when I'm talking about nutrition. Again, just reiterating this point that instead of thinking of food as good or bad, we should change that language and think of it as calorie dense or nutrient dense. And when it comes to sports and fitness, we are generally looking at how to improve either our strength, improve our body composition, and we want to aim for the best balance of macronutrients. The macronutrients are those fats, carbohydrates, and proteins that I'm talking about, and we do need all three of them. In particular, people who are active and wanting to see body composition changes and using exercise as a modality to help that come to fruition. Carbohydrates are the main source of fuel, not only for the fitness events that we're about to do, but also our body in general. I am pretty loud about how much I advocate for carbohydrates in the diet. And I don't recommend people do low carbohydrate diets for a variety of reasons but mostly it's because I am seeing food for the fuel and especially in our workouts. And that is what our body needs for fuel. So before your elixir testing, please make sure you eat some form of carbohydrates. Even, it, it, even if it's uh, 30 minutes before and you're like, oh no, I haven't eaten, grab a juice or a piece of fruit, a banana, something that's gonna give you a little bit of carbohydrates to kickstart the energy metabolism that you're gonna need when you start to do your test. 
also just to finish this up, when I'm programming for people, I will find their total calories in a day. As a registered dietitian, this is like my num one of my number one skills, right? I can calculate your needs in a second. And I will break it up into how much you should have for protein, how much should come from carbs and how much should come from fats. Because this to me is the gold standard way we should all approach nutrition. This is individualized to your needs. This is specific to your goals. And it will, after a thorough food assessment, meet you where you are at. Because sometimes I work with people and they're eating, let's say it's a female, 5'5", 180 pounds, and she wants to see some weight loss. If she's only eating 50 grams of protein, but I know by the calculations that I do and the goals that she has, she should probably be around 130. I don't just recommend she go from 50 to 130 grams of protein. We stepwise her up because the body does need time to adjust. So I'm a big fan of looking at your diet as for, in the form of how many macronutrients do you need in your day, especially when it comes to pre and post-workout or your fitness goals. Now, I'm always very conscious that when I talk about macros, it comes very naturally to me, and I, I use a lot of numbers in my language, but everybody here, we eat food, we don't eat numbers. So some examples of how you can apply some of those nutrient-dense foods into your diet before your workout are to include some bigger forms of food in the one to four hours before exercise. Of course, the farther away you are from your workout, let's say your elixir test is at uh, 10 a.m., you definitely wanna have a good full breakfast in you by 8 a.m. if you don't intend to eat before. So some examples might include peanut butter and honey on bread, fruit and yogurt, or oatmeal with brown sugar and almonds and banana, low-fat cottage cheese or yogurt, granola fruit, you can see how these foods are high in carbohydrates, there's some fats involved, but we're giving our body those micronutrients and macronutrients it needs to fuel that workout with gusto. Portion sizes do matter, of course, but that's something that comes over time when you start to look at, okay, do I use my tablespoon to spoon out my peanut butter? Or maybe you're comfortable enough to use a food scale at home. Because again, none of these foods on this list are good or bad. They are just providing us calories and nutrients. And that's what we need. So just reiterating, pre-workout, we want to aim for more carbohydrates and fats and proteins when we're far away from our workout. But if we have 30 to 60 minutes before our workout, this is where you want like a quick source of fuel. I'm sure all of us here have met somebody who has ran a marathon or half marathon or something. Oftentimes those people will carry those gel packets because they need a quick source of fuel in a short amount of time. When you're approaching your workout and you've got 30 to 60 minutes, let's say it's after work and you're driving to your group fitness class and you need to down something pretty quickly, that would be appropriate for you to have a piece of fruit, crackers, or a jam sandwich, something with mostly carbohydrates and not a lot of fats or proteins. Um, proteins are a little bit easier to digest, but fats in particular take a longer time to digest, which is why these pre-workout food recommendations are a little bit oriented towards more carbs and proteins than too high in fats. Um, more examples, a sports drink or water, Aim for a sports drink if your last meal was a, a while ago. Uh, sports gel, sports bar, like I mentioned. I once had a male client. He worked for Douglas County Sheriff's Department. And his goal was to gain, right? He, he wasn't taking enough in based on his needs and goals. And he wanted to gain weight. So I needed to make sure that what he was eating was more than his needs. I had him start eating Rice Krispie Treats in between his workouts. So that way, one, he could finish his workouts with gusto because he was nearly passing out during like a 50 minute group fitness class. And so that way he could start to gain some muscle because as he's lifting, he's making his muscles progressively overload. That's how we build muscle when we give our bodies enough fuel. Um, other examples I like for the pre-workout right before are fruit purees or pouches like applesauce. Um, baby food is another great one. You just get a little pouch of mashed banana, strawberry, potato, and you're good to go. Now, that's all pre-workout. We're thinking we got to fuel our bodies, we got to hydrate our bodies, we got to get the right amount of food volume in us that helps us feel good during those workouts. And then after the workout, we have to think recovery, fluid, and nutrients. So if you work out, let's say at 6 p.m., 
your dinner theoretically is your post-workout or maybe it's a late night snack. So some of the best ideas out there for post-workout is a smoothie with low fat milk, spinach or kale and some frozen fruit, uh, because there you're getting a good amount of carbohydrates and protein, some micronutrients that are easy to digest, easy to absorb. Graham crackers with peanut butter and low fat chocolate milk. Um, graham crackers sometimes can carry a little bit more fats in them. Um, the one I have has eight grams of fats. So I would just recommend that that be something that you have if you're, you know, maybe you were low on your fats that day, uh, but it's a really great, again, vehicle for you to carry in more nutrients. A uh, carbohydrate sports drink or a whole wheat pita hummus, some juice. So you can see that there's a variety of foods that are appropriate pre and post workout, no matter what your goal is. We just have to make sure that we're choosing the nutrient dense ones as often as possible. And sometimes that takes planning ahead, which is a behavior that all of us you know, can practice, right? Um, some other recovery meal ideas, you're, these are bigger plates of food, and this would be appropriate, like I said, if your post-workout was dinner, or maybe you worked out at uh, a gym in your office setting, and you were going to just sit down for lunch afterwards, you could have a big bowl of rice with beans and salsa, cheese, avocado, or grilled fish, uh, chicken or steak. Oh my gosh, some of the best seafood I've eaten was in Miami, so if you're not getting on that, uh, I'm, I'm a little bit envious, especially since I'm landlocked in Colorado. Um, but you see that we can really pack in a good amount of nutrition around our workouts, depending on how far away we are from our workouts. Now, this is where I start to talk a little bit about optimizing that timing, that nutrient timing strategy for pre and post workout. So in the realm of fitness, when we're talking about pre and post workout, and we're talking about meal timing, what we're trying to achieve is the right spacing of those nutrient needs that we found out for you. So that way you're well fueled throughout the day that your workout food pre and post is going to digest well and give you the energy and nutrients that you need and that you meet all of your needs in a, the time frame of a day. Generally people ask me about fasting and I think this is a really good time to talk about intermittent fasting. My overall arching philosophy of nutrition is that I'm in this job to help people fuel their bodies to their needs. While intermittent fasting generally is used, um, I'm speaking more about the weight uh, control form of intermittent fasting, not the religious practices. Like some of my friends were practicing Ramadan last week, different conversation. Di so I'm speaking mostly about fasting as a weight loss method. Um, I choose to not advocate for that because I want people to understand how to fuel their bodies and optimize how they time their meals, especially given pre-workout time. So before a workout, even if it's at 5 a.m., I really strive to encourage my clients to have something small because that's when the body is going to be primed to use the fuel that we give it. And if we don't give our body the fuel, it might seem like, oh, it's just gonna pull from body fat stores. But depending on your stress levels in other areas of your life, depending on how hard you have to exercise, if you're overtraining, sometimes the skipping of the meals actually hurts your progress more than helps it. So I talk about optimizing nutrient strategy or nutrient time strategies. So that way I am meeting the person's needs based on their goals. So here's an example of a timetable that I might put together for a client. And when we're looking at a workout that's in the morning, we might have breakfast at 7 a.m. and that the workout is at 9 a.m., right? So we have a full meal. You have two hours, you can definitely get in like two slices of toast, some eggs, maybe a little egg whites for extra protein, some fruit, and you'll be good to go. Uh, then you get to eat the rest of your meals throughout the day. If you have PM workout, then you're looking at starting your day off with your breakfast. Go, you get ready, you drive, you go to work, then you have lunch. Then you might want to have a snack before your workout because as you can see here, going from 12 o'clock to five o'clock, without any nutrition will definitely show up in your workouts. It happens sometimes we, we go through, we forget a snack, we maybe we're extra hungry during the day. So we ate all of our snacks, especially for women, there's certain times of the month that we will actually need more calories. So it's always a good idea to think about two hours, I should have something in my body for my workout. Uh, then you would just continue the rest of the day. Now, sometimes people have two a day workouts. I know that there are some people who wake up and they go for a run and then in the 
e evening they lift weights. So that person would still aim for a full breakfast, then their first workout, a lunch, then their second workout, which you can see there's a little bit more of a gap here. We have uh, about four hours after lunch, but it's pretty much guaranteed that the lunch is a big lunch because it is it's post workout and then you continue onwards so i look at the individual and figure out okay when is their ideal workout time let's build their breakfast and lunch around their workout if their workout is in the mid a.m um, if somebody isn't working out until late afternoon then i might strategize their calories or their meals oriented more towards that workout time doesn't mean i'm skipping breakfast just means that breakfast might be a little bit smaller. Maybe you just have like a little protein shake and a rice cake, you know, just something to like easy, it's quick, get out the door fast, go to work. But that lunch that you bring or that snack that you bring, those are going to be substantial for your for your PM workout. And in addition to the calories, the food, the macros, we have to talk about fluid because fluid intake is critical. The intensity of sport and weather will really impact your fluid balance. Some people are sweaters. Some people are not salty sweaters, but you should always aim to replace your fluid and sodium loss in sweat as soon as possible after exercise. I drink about a gallon a day. And while there really isn't a standard for fluid intake, there are two recommendations I will share with you today. The first recommendation is aim for about half of your body weight in fluid ounces. So if you're 200 pounds, aim for about 100 fluid ounces of water. The other typical equation I might use is to find some of these bare minimum fluid needs. And that is one calorie is equal to one milliliter of fluid that they need. So if I'm recommending somebody have 1800 calories, then their minimum fluid intake should be 1800 milliliters or 1.8 liters, which I think is, it's not that much. Uh, I believe this is, this is 1.2 liters. So if you can get one of these plus a half at 1800 calories, you're meeting your minimum needs. Now that's not exactly optimal. I would go higher for sure. And adding a little pinch of salt will be a great way to get some of that sodium, re sodium replenishment without maybe spending more money on electrolyte supplements. Now I will say, I do like electrolyte supplements. I use them myself personally, but it is still typically adding some calories from sugar and that's okay. We actually need sugar to be hydrated. Uh, but there's something for everybody in the fluid conversation. Some people struggle to drink water because the temperature needs to be right. So I say add as much ice as possible. Um, some people need to drink flavored water because they, they just really hate the taste of water. They're just not used to it. And I say, okay, put a little crystal light packet in there. That's fine. Not going to make a huge calorie dent. Is the optimum, uh, the, the gold standard would be to try and drink as much plain water as possible. But I am very uh, aware of how some people just aren't in that habit yet, but it is very, very important, especially after your workout. So when you do your elixir test, bring some water for pre-workout, post-workout, make sure that you're well hydrated, even if it's just a little water bottle. I know that they provide water bottles there, but it's a good habit to carry a water bottle with you anyway. So I do recommend. Okay, so I'm gonna shift gears a little bit just talking about when we're gaining lean mass, like if we're trying to build some muscle or if we're trying to lose body fat. So one of the easiest ways to think about if you're trying to gain lean mass is you wanna opt for those higher calorie, higher nutrient dense foods more often. So you wanna use a lot more whole eggs than just egg whites. You wanna use a lot of um, bigger slices of maybe whole grain toast instead of like a little rice cake or something like that. You wanna choose to eat uh, peanut butter and jelly instead of you know maybe just a little bit of each. Um, you wanna get the nutrients and calories when you're trying to build muscle. And I will tell you guys, it is actually pretty difficult to build muscle because you don't just get to eat more food. You actually have to work really hard in the gym. You have to build some muscle, but I will say it is quite fun. Then if you're trying to lose body fat, what you're looking to do is choose high nutrient dense foods still, but lower calorie dense foods. And I don't mean by, by any stretch of the imagination, too low calorie, right? Like I'm not trying to get people to eat like 1200 calories a day. It's much too minimal for most adults. Actually, every adult that I've worked with, they've never had a calorie requirement of 1200. That's so low, but you can still try to maximize all of your nutrient intake by choosing low calorie dense foods. 
but that's sometimes people tell me like, I feel like I'm eating all day long. I'm like, yep, that's because you're eating a lot of high nutrient dense foods, but not a lot of high calorie dense foods. So here are some examples of foods. Just, you know, if you guys want to sit and think like, all right, what are my goals for myself this summer? Like, how do I want to feel? How do I want to carry myself? If I am looking to build a little bit more muscle in my frame, maybe I do include some more of those, you know, high calorie dense, high nutrient dense foods. So maybe I add some avocados to my salad, put a little more salmon in the mix, put a little trail mix in the purse. So that way when I'm hungry, I have a high calorie dense snack that I can have, but it's well portion controlled. But if you're somebody who's like, nah, I'm looking to get slim and trim, like really reveal some muscle, then yeah, try to go for things like fresh fruits and vegetables to build a big bowl, like eating a high amount of volume, but getting lots of nutrients. Or you're going for skim milk instead of, you know, 2% or whole, more egg whites than eggs. Now, just a side note, you can eat eggs no matter what plan you're trying for. It's just instead of having three eggs and an omelet when you're trying to lose body fat, you might want to have one egg and a cup of egg whites. Uh, so that's uh, always comes up in my talks. People are like, what, Monica, you don't like eggs? No, I love eggs. Eggs are, eggs are supreme. But I will try to modify how much of the yolk I have, not by getting rid of it, but just by having maybe one or two and pumping it up with egg whites. Okay, so just continuing on because I talk a lot about the basics of nutrition, why we need the carbs, fats, and proteins, why calories are important. Then I talked about the nutrient density, and now we have to talk about the behaviors. How do we get this in motion? So I'm a big fan of meal prep, and I don't mean the meal prep of like cooking all day Sunday and then organizing like five Tupperware containers for every day. So you have like 25 Tupperware containers. No, thank you. I've done it before. Sometimes it works for people, but generally speaking, when I say meal prep, I just mean preparing some foods ahead of time. That can be packing your lunch the night before. That could be the batch cook method, which is something I really like to use. Um, batch cooking is when you make a bunch of ground turkey and a bunch of, ground, a, a bunch of rice. And then you just let it sit in your fridge and then you make a little lunch or something throughout the week. Uh, or maybe you have tortillas and you can make tacos with the ground turkey. It allows for more flexibility. So meal prep helps you plan ahead and be ready for anything. Traveling, short breaks in between practices or games or work meetings. Meal prepping will keep you from having to decide what should I eat and help you get better nutrient timing. So if you know I've got 8 a.m. work, I've got a 10 a.m. meeting. I'm going to sneak up to the gym from 11 to 12. I need to make sure that I have something around that 10 o'clock time, just a little nosh, because I'm going to go work out afterwards. And then I have to have lunch. So this is how meal prep will help, because then you wake up that day and you're like, I've got my meals prepped. I've got, or at least I've got a plan. Meal prepping also saves you time later. So even if you just batch cook a bunch of potatoes, chicken, a big salad, you can assemble those meals really quickly. I promise you, it actually takes less time to prep potatoes, chicken, and salad than it does to be at work, be hungry, not have lunch, go to the drive-thru, get angry because people driving just, you know, sometimes irritate us. And then you, the order gets you gets wrong and you have to spend money, then you have to rush back and you don't even like get to sit and enjoy it. That takes more time out of your day than you realize. Whereas I can, you know, a couple of uh, cans open for a bean salad takes minimal, minimal amount of time. But sometimes time isn't a barrier. Sometimes people just do not, uh, sometimes people just don't have that time and, or they don't like to cook or they don't have meals. So I encourage people seek out meal prep companies. They're generally a little bit healthier than some of the fast food restaurants. Also, their portion sizes are so much more appropriate for our bodies. If you want to shock yourselves, look up your favorite restaurant, try it, try a chain because they'll have the PDF of the menu and just look up what the calorie recommendation, uh, calorie information is for something. I had a client who actually lives in Florida. Uh, her and I were looking at Twin Peaks menus. And it was astounding how many calories can come in a piece of steak and a broccoli side. It's just like, wow, that was like a thousand calories. And you don't think about that, but at home, you can make the same steak and broccoli entree for a lot less money and a lot fewer calories. Um, so just try to seek out all the options so that way you can get more control of the foods that you're eating and planning for, especially that pre and post-workout. So here are some additional examples of just foods that I think are really good conceptually to think about what is a nutrient dense meal that doesn't have too many calories or is just easy to calorie control. 
overnight oats. I love using overnight oats because it cuts down that prep time in the morning. And you really just need to put oats and yogurt or non-dairy milk, if that's your thing, with chia seeds in a big bowl and you're ready to go. And then in the morning, you can scoop it into a to-go container and eat it at work. Or you could just scoop it into a bowl, sit down at your counter and eat it. Or you can put it in individual to-go containers. Then you open the fridge, grab your thing, and you're out of there. Uh, steel cut oats, I love making them in a crock pot because it's just easy. I set it and forget it. Strawberry banana protein shake, easy, blend it up. Your so those are some breakfast options that I think work really well, no matter what your goals are when it comes to sports and fitness or body composition. Um, some small meals and snacks. If you've if you've ever worked with me before, you know that I don't look at meals as this is a breakfast meal, so it has to be this, and this is a snack, so it has to be this. I'm like, however many times of feeding you need in a day, kind of like a baby, like how many feeds do you give your baby? You might call it breakfast, lunch, dinner, but there's a lot of feeds in between. Same thing with humans and adults, right? Um, I might consider a buffalo chicken wrap a snack. And somebody might be like, that's your snack. And like, yep, this is, it. it's just, it's just the in-between lunch and dinner, but those labels don't mean anything to me. Uh, so there's some options. And then some different options for bigger meals might be like a salmon berry salad. You're getting a ton of nutrition there. And turkey chili is another great one, ton of nutrition, sirloin vegetables for fried. So there's another pattern here that I haven't really dove into, but I'm about to wrap up and hopefully you guys have some questions. Definitely ask me any, but something that I like to really emphasize with people is when you're building a meal, when you're thinking about breakfast, snack, lunch, any, any time you eat, what is your protein source? Think about your protein source first. And if you aren't sure what foods have protein, uh, definitely reach out to an RD or, or like, you know, there's probably some resources or examples that can provide you with a list of protein foods and try to build your plan of eating off of protein first. Then fill in your plate with some sort of carbohydrate, ideally a nice high fiber carbohydrate that you love and enjoy. I love oatmeal. I love potatoes. I love rice. Those are my go-tos. Easy to make. I'm comfortable with them. I know they work for my body, but somebody might be all about plantains or rice and beans together. And though that's a great source of carbohydrates to put on the plate. Uh, and then you want to think color. So protein, carbs, and color. Color is where we're adding, you know, carrots, asparagus, blueberries, strawberries. Uh, you know, depending on what meal you're eating might dictate what you're having for the color. It might be fruit, might be veggies. Um, while those fruits and vegetables are a source of carbohydrate, they're so low calorie dense that really you're getting some calories from carbs, but mostly you're getting the micronutrients in those foods. You're getting, that's what colors mean in food. So thinking about that, looking at your day, think, okay, what am I having for lunch? What's going to be my protein? What's going to be my carbohydrate? What's going to be the color on my plate? That right there will set you up for success. And if you're looking to see some weight loss, think about the portion size. Can I make any of these options smaller? Or if you're looking to build some muscle, make sure you got a little extra on that plate. So hopefully this is a you know, good breakdown of sports nutrition tips, pre and post-workout, and then also just a general overview of how to start practicing good nutrition mindset and behaviors. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the floor to you guys. Let me know if you have any questions. You can put them in the chat or if you'd like to just open up the mic, you totally can. I've got the chat open. Okay. Well, at any rate, if you don't have any questions, totally fine. Sometimes after a lot of information, you're like, I, I just need time to process this. So I'll go ahead and wrap this up for us and say thank you so much for joining. Really appreciate you guys here. If you have any other specific nutrition questions, um, you can either, you know, find a way, my contact information, my email is um, Monica Salafia rd at gmail.com um, or somebody from Elixir can connect your question to me and I, I'll be able to provide a response but I will be chatting with you guys soon and definitely let me know any other topics you'd like me to cover I have a whole list of topics that I can talk about in nutrition some are women specific if we ever want to do that some are you know behavior based anti-inflammatory lots of topics so do share what you'd like to benefit more from in the nutrition department all right guys thank you so much